Hello. Right, this is going to be the quickest tour of Disneyland while Rachel waits in a queue to see Chip and Dale somewhere behind me. We quickly try and go around all four lands. Three lands, four lands, there's four, and I'll see what I can do. So, this is the main square just off the back of Main Street. So, you can pass by the horse drawn tram. The castle there, right in the middle. But if you take a left here, it takes you towards Frontierland. And that's where a couple of the decent rides are. So, let's see. The park opened about 20 minutes ago to everybody. So it's getting quite busy. I think even at this point, though some of the right times are still not too bad. It just depends, picking and choosing what you go on. So some of the major ones are quite well, we'll busy very, very quickly. Anyway, here we are in Frontierland. So, just coming into view, it's Phantom Manor up the back. That's one of my favourites. I think it's a good fun ride. Get decent music around here. Proper old west. And if you look up online, there's a proper story behind Phantom Manor, Big Thunder Mountain, which is there. And basically, this whole area. Won't do any spoilers for Phantom Manor, but there is a full plot to it and it makes perfect sense. So, you can see Big Thunder Mountain is running away there. That is great fun. I think I've said it. In said it before, but yeah, Big Thunder Mountain is excellent, one of the decent roller coasters. To be fair, all the roller coasters here are, they're all pretty good. I do enjoy all of them. Flight Force is my favourite in the other park, but Big Thunder is decent. So, follow the crowd round. Bye. I said, that's one thing I became an expert in is weaving around everybody. Oh, this is relatively new, I've not been into it yet. It's a Coco themed restaurant. And that's, that's one of my absolute favourite of the Pixar films. I'm quite pleased with that, but we've just not had the chance to get it. It's always a very, very long queue. Go down this way. This is still all frontier land here. There is a path down to Adventureland there. Which way go up to Cowboy Cookout? Here. So yes, yeah, so that's Cowboy Cookout over there. It's not open yet, it opens at lunchtime. It's excellent. We went to it a couple of days ago and it really did surprise me about how good it actually was. I don't know why I didn't expect it to be good, but yeah, I was I was very impressed. The food was the food was excellent. So yeah, so yeah, if you're there, that's as well worth trying. we we'll go around here and I think this is one of the points where there's a character meet. I want to say it's Rafiki and, ah yes it is, Rafiki and Timon meet there. So that's just at the back end of Frontierland but it's actually into Adventureland. And as you can tell, music's changed slightly. And we're now in Adventureland. So we'll go down these stairs. This is um, Tunnel Hathies. That's not bad. I think we went to it the first day. I think I possibly prefer the other ones ahead of it, but it's just personal preference. Right. I'm four minutes into my very quick tour. Right, down the back end there is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril, which is just Temple of Doom settings. You can just see the ride up the top there. It's really fast. <laughs> it's probably got the steepest drop, I think, of any of the roller coasters. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but it's definitely got. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite. It's quite, I think it's quite a good ride. It's good, good roller coaster. It's 
put some scales in it. These steep drops and a really like an out of the blue loop. But it's yeah, it's not bad. Again, it's one where if you've got a nice short queue for it, it's actually alright. Again, I think when it comes to it, you can choose to stand in a queue for two hours. Or you can just time it right and get it really, really quickly. Uh, so this is basically the entrance to Adventureland through Agrabah from the other side of the, the sort of circle. This is now towards Adventure Isle. And it's the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, I think. But down there is where you can blue. And then over the other side is Captain Hook, Pier Pan. But you can tell it's coming up to that area because of the pirate ship. So it's up through this area where you get it's a Peter Pan section and Pirates of the Caribbean. Which is a ride where I know it's over oh there it is there. As I say, I know where it is, but I can never ever find the entrance to it. I've no idea how, I just seem to manage to get lost occasionally. Yeah, there's a couple of areas of the park where, yeah, I managed to lose my bearings and just not find the right path. Right, to take a quick detour. This is one of the character meets as well. Captain Hook is in that section usually. And Peter Pan and Wendy are here. So it's just down from Pirates of the Caribbean. Again, that's usually got shortish queues. It's quite a high kind of throughput ride. We'll pop the barrier up there. It's a high throughput in that one, so yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean's quite good fun, I think. This is Fantasyland at the back end of the park. So this is where so over there is Peter Pan's flight and the marionette restaurants over there. We've not been to this trip. But again, that's another quite nice one. I think it's, I think it's German style food, something like that. I, I can't remember. But it's it, it's good. I realise you said it's good, it's not the best <laughs> recommendation. But yeah, Peter Pan's flight has always got a long queue. Never massively understood how, but it does. Even at the like, half nine at night, it's still got a 30 40 minute queue for some reason. So I think maybe you want to go in that one, yeah, except we've, we've got a long queue. Interesting already, this time in the morning, and the Meet Mickey Mouse queue is, well, queuing up here by where the Alice in Wonderland meet, or the Alice in Wonderland, the Alice meet is. Meeting Mickey Mouse is just all the timing. It's just all, all timing. The queue yesterday got to 120 minutes. When we waited on it, I think it was only about 62. I think it was just over an hour actually. The queue thing never updated. Just behind me is Alison. Well, Alison's Curious Labyrinth, which we had a walk through yesterday. That's nice. There's the old mill. And depending on the time of year, you sometimes get meats up here. And it used to be you would get secret meats just round the back of it. I think recently it's just been Pluto, but we've seen it before where if you can queue up there, you can occasionally get one of the princesses or some different characters that aren't normally out in parks. So if that's your thing, go for it. Right now, there's a huge queue because I think everybody's waiting for the Princess Pavilion. Which is just open, I can see it. Princess Pavilion can be a really long way. I think at one point it hit 200, over 200 minutes just the other day. So it's a huge chunk of your day you can lose just queuing there. And the world. It's a small world. This has been shut the last couple of times we've been at the park, but this time it's been open for a while, it's not been here that long. And uh, it's a small world, not a lot else to say about that one. Other than it's got a really catchy tune. 
And I'm just coming by another point. This is the point where the parade comes out. But occasionally, if you're lucky, in time you just walk by the right point, you can see a couple of characters kind of walking by. They won't stop and take photos with you, but you can get a chance to see some of them. There's extra areas where actually if you if you're willing to just wait a couple of minutes you can see somebody. It used to be one of the paths of the princess coming out, I think that's changed now. We get an opportunity to see certain folk. At the moment, with it being Christmas, there's a show on every afternoon. I think that'll be finished next week. Oh, the wind. It's quite a stormy morning as well. Let the wind subside. But yeah, I'm back out into the main the circle of the park. Just the window allow it. But yeah, over just over there. There's a show going on each day. At the moment it's all the princesses. So again, it's another opportunity to see everyone, but I think that's I think that finishes in a couple of days' time. And they'll go into whatever the next show's gonna be. Oh yeah, looped round now, so that's me went all the way round. Only one area left to go and that's Discovery Land. Which has been two of my favourite rides. Although I'm retired from one of them. So Discovery Land. Yeah. Normally the music's very different around because it's Christmas. I still got a Christmas playlist on. And what I'm noticing at this time in the morning is not very many wee shops open, although I can see one where I can get coffee there. So that's ultimately what I got sent to do. Not make a video, just go out and get coffee. I'll just find it the way back. Right, here we are. So, this is Buzz Lightyear. Which I, I think, yeah, Buzz Lightyear is great. It can have quite a long queue at it at the moment, 10 minutes. It's not too bad. But if you do have Buzz Lightyear right, there is the maximum score is 999,999. It is achievable because I did it yesterday and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm so so happy that I managed it. I mean, try to do that for ages. If you just hit the right targets, you can do it. It's all about just hitting the specific targets, and it's possible. So yeah, I've got the maximum score. So that's one of my favourites, but I kind of want to say I'm retired. And this is the other favourite, Hyperspace Mountain. Which some good timing, it's just fired. Yeah, Hyperspace Mountain, of the other roller coasters in the park, it's really good, really accessible for everybody. Some good drops, decent enough Star Wars theming, although I think we could always do a wee bit more with it. Over there's Utopia, the wee car ride. I've only been on that once. I always want to get another one, it's always got a very, very long queue. Yeah, there's always a long queue for Utopia, but when you're on it, it's quite nice. Keep Space Mountain behind me. So maybe I'll wait 13, nearly 14 minutes. Right, there's the Space Mountain the launch pad. So you can see they've not rethemed this bit for Star Wars. They've kept it with the, the original Space Mountain sort of style. It's a steampunk, I don't know. But what I'll do is I'll go around the back of it. And that's toward the last couple of rides. I think. I think I've managed to see, I've managed to buy absolutely everything. More or less. Space Mountain, that's where you get your photos just in this bit here. And then round to Discovery Land Theatre. So there's the show on in there, and I didn't realise this was on until yesterday. Yesterday or the day before. But yeah, it's. Well, do you know what? I'll uh, need to, to read it out because I can't remember the title of it, but there's a full 3D show one in there, a 4D show, actually. Oh, it's Mickey and the 
filler magic orchestra. Ah, try saying again. Mickey and the filler Mo filler magic orchestra. It's a three D show, so it goes takes place every twenty minutes or so during the day. I didn't know what to expect. Really impressed. I think the last ride to go by, and that's Star Tours. So there's the X-Wing up there. And then, the entrance to Star Tours. So at this time of the morning, Star Tours is so it's 10 minutes now. Again, later on, actually, after about 9 o'clock, the time in Star Tours drops to 5 minutes. I wouldn't queue half an hour an hour for it. I think it does go 30, 40 minutes at least. That's the wind again. But in terms of yeah, if it's being on it when it's a queue of like five, ten minutes. It's uh, well worth doing. Right. Background and out Discovery Land. Just the last bit. There's the Hyperion rest well, restaurant in there, it's just got fast food burgers and things like that. I think at this time it's doing breakfast, but later on it'll start doing some. I think it's just burger meals and things. Not been in there in years, so I've no idea if it's any good or not anymore. It's the airship up top. And then back to past Buzz Lightyear. See already the queue is starting to go up. It does move relatively quick, but yeah, you can get stuck in a long queue on that one. I'd, I'd say if you've never been on it, it's well worth doing. Even if it's like maybe 20, 20 minute, 25 minute queue, after that, just wait until the queue drops down. Again, another one where later on in the night, when everybody's queuing for the fireworks in the middle, Queuing up, setting themselves up to watch the fireworks. It's always relatively short. And then lastly, I'm back in the main square with the castle. I'm just talking to the fireworks. Everybody tries to line up in the middle. Over here, we've watched it from over here. The projection, you can see most of it. And the fireworks are fine. They've kind of toned down the fireworks with the current display. But the absolute best place to watch it is in the middle, square onto the castle. You see absolutely everything. Some of the side views, you miss out on a couple of bits and pieces. So yeah, it's it can be worth waiting 45, 50 minutes for the fireworks. Just to get a good view of them. But there we are, I am back at the start. It's over there. And that... And that is a very, very quick 18 and a half minute tour of Disneyland Paris. I think I've done not too bad there getting around everything. But yeah, that's good. So, uh, the castle back there, and uh, yeah, that's the, that's the tour.